it because it doesn't it doesn't boil. So uh, there right. you go. Can we get a demo on that? Can can like tomorrow? Can we just have like a little special session where we get to see your breakfast? Up no, no. Okay. <laughs> well, we're live. Welcome everyone to our success mastermind for Friday the twenty second, twenty twenty one. John Lavinia here with Koila, who's making her breakfast the night before in a slow cooker pot. It's the first time I've ever heard about that. Let's see who else we got here. We got some fun people with us here today. Who wants to have some fun? We got Ego hey, and Ego. Rick. Good to see you guys. We got, of course, Mark. Give me a smile, Mark. Just a little. Thank you so much, <laughs> Sonia. Ali, good to see you. There's Emma. Emma's walking around a winter wonderland is what it looks like. Uh, Daisy is back on the beach. Of course, Neil and Jane are here. Jane, ladies and gentlemen, is gracing us with her presence, as is Jane Akinyalu. Jane and Jane are here with us. Good to see you guys. Gail, Carl, Sandra, I can't see. Nancy, Evelyn, Edward, Julia, Cyril, good to see you. Susie and Lindsay and more people tuning in. As we speak, um, Sonia is asking in the chat, can you guys believe there's nine days left in the month? That is, um, yeah, time flies, right? So almost one month down, 11 to go in this year that we decided was going to be uh, even better than last. Even better than last. Believe it or not, it can be even better than the last year. And we, um, we got to hear, you know what, it's fun Friday. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I definitely deserve a joke. I think maybe Jane or Koyla or someone who doesn't normally tell, Ivie, Ivie is going to come out with a joke. You know, just before we went live, Ego was talking with us about, um, about what she did on Tech Talk earlier today, which is about decluttering your desktop. And I asked, is that virtual or like, you know, your computer desktop or like your physical space? which we've talked about before. And she said, no, we're talking about the virtual desktop in this case. And while we were doing that, uh, Ivie was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, I hear a bird, a yeah, yeah, yeah bird. <laughs> you guys remember the um, Sesame Street? <laughs> yep, yep, Martians. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Ivie. <laughs> you remember the yep, yep, Martians? <laughs> yes, I in do. Yeah, where they would get like a like a telephone or something, and they're looking at the yeah. phone. Oh, cat! Yeah. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Oh, exactly. Oh. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> I remember. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, I've seen uh, I've seen people like a whole troop of people, like twenty or thirty people at like costume parties, all dressed up like the Yep Yep Martians, all you know with different colors. So apparently, it's a pretty easy costume to make. You just need like this fluffy blanket or something and you put the eyes and then you cut the the mouth because their mouth kind of angles up you know it kind of just goes like that um but yeah people uh people really dig that stuff that and the count the count um i recently saw some political jokes that uh involved the count coming to help people with their mess <laughs> anyway who's got a joke for us today that you'd like to share or a dog or a cat or something to brighten everyone's day <clears throat> my dog is uh, in the other room. I may be able to bring him in. Do we have any jokes? I have a joke. Oh, please give us, Kim, help us. I have to find it. Hold on. I'm pulling okay. it up here Keep real quick. Searching. Keep on searching. But to Ego's point, yeah, a cluttered desktop, virtual or physical, um, does not make for efficiency. Um so uh, so there's our first lesson for today is keep keep order. All right, Kim, you're up. Okay. What does the new Chips Ahoy marketing director do her first, his, I should say his or her, first day on the job? Chips Ahoy. I don't know. What do they do? Enable cookies. Enable <laughs> cookies. <laughs> Cheesy, but that's great. made you laugh. No, that's that's you go. good. That's good. Rated G. Very good. We have children watching sometimes. Hey, Jane and Neil, what's going on? I have a joke. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that's right. So... There's this man and he wants to go out hunting. Um, so he calls his friend up and they go out, go out hunting and they're on their way out and uh, his friend collapses and he's panicking like mad, he's panicking like mad. So he dials, this is for all you Americans, he dials 911 and uh, the operator's on the other line and uh, he says, she says to him, um, well, is he dead yet? And then 
the operator hears this bang on the phone and he comes back to the operator and he says, he is now, what do I do now? <laughs> that is sick, Neil. That's, that's, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Um, and in fact, in England, just for my own edification, isn't the uh, emergency dial number triple nine? Yes. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> and the only reason I know that is, is from listening to Motorhead and they did a song called Emergency and he kept saying, 999, emergency. And I'm like, 999, that must be an English thing. I'm right. See that deductive reasoning. Good times. We got Coila up next. Hey, Coila. Hi. I, I'm kind of missing Stuart, so I thought I'd tell a Stuart type of joke. Oh, good. Yeah. For his 70th birthday, um, a student of a Zen master gave, uh, gave him a big box with a ribbon around it. When the master opened the box, he found there was nothing inside. He said, aha, just what I wanted. <laughs> That's it. I've actually seen that on a greeting card, like a happy birthday card, like the Dalai Lama's happy birthday. And there's a, the other llamas hanging out in the background, all excited that he's going to open his president. And he looks inside. Exactly what I always wanted. That's it. <laughs> well done, Koila. Uh, and, and an interesting lesson in, in non-attachment, right? All this <laughs> physical stuff. My goodness, stuff. I can do it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That is reminiscent of Stuart. All right, we got Glenn and then Ego and then Gail. Look at all this. We're so forthcoming with our Man, humor today. Hey, Glenn. Man, we are just we are just joke lessening all over each other That's today. It. Isn't this something? Yeah. You know, even in even in humor, we can find we can find life philosophies or, yeah. or something. Uh, hey, hope everybody's doing great. Um, actually, John, it's it's really. Um, not a joke. It's, it's, it's sort of bad news. Um, I, you remember I mentioned last week that, you know, my stats were up taking some, take, taking action and yeah, been kind of slow actually the last couple of weeks. So, um, I, I, I've decided that, that I've, yeah, I have to, I have to go and get a day job to, you know, help pay the bills and stuff. So, yeah. So, um, I put out some I have resumes and stuff and applications. I put in the most recent one I was really hoping for, I put in an application to work um, right over here across town in my local restaurant. I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Glenn. And of course, this is the joke portion of our mastermind group. So uh, snappy looking shirt you got there too, Glenn. Very nice. Look at snappy as always. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Yeah, we got Ego and Gail. Hey, Ego. Hi, happy Friday, everyone. Um, so this is a math uh, joke. How many times can you subtract 10 from 100? 10? Once, no, only once. Only once, because the next time you'd be subtracting 10 from 90. Man, oh, look yeah. at that. I just flunked the IQ test. Oh. <laughs> that was just an ego type of joke. Yeah, right. that's, that's too rough for me ego my head hurts already <laughs> okay I, I can give you another one okay okay I'll be, uh, I'll so be what's what's the best thing about switzerland suzanne <laughs> <laughs> i don't know but it has a big plus <laughs> yeah right the, the flag the swiss flag i got one for you and they're going to come out with gail gail's gonna tickle our ribs here for a second what's the best thing that ever came out of las vegas a jumbo seen... jet. <laughs> <laughs> Julie gets it. <laughs> a jumbo jet. Like, get me the hell out of here. All right. Um, <laughs> Gail. Gail, we'll wrap up with Gail. Then we'll get on to some serious stuff. Okay, hey. I'm going to read it. <laughs> the teacher says, kids, what does the chicken give you? And the student says, meat. Teacher says, very good. Now, what does the pig give you? Bacon. And teacher Great. What does the fat cow give you and the student? Homework. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, there's that. See, that that's, just that's, happened. That's, just me. That ain't right. that's messed up. That's awesome, Gail. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was great. That was great. And for any of our youth listening, that is probably not what you want to do in real life, but I suppose you could. Um, all right. So um, anything else before we move on to more serious stuff. Gail always has a great joke for us. Thank you, Gail. And David, I don't see David on here. Okay. So um, 
You know what, keeping with the, the sub theme of the day that was introduced at five o'clock in the morning, my time by Ego, I want to talk a little bit about, um, about order. This is very pragmatic. It's not, uh, it's not something that you need to think about too much. You don't need to take notes. You don't need to, uh, you know, stand on ceremony, as we like to say in the UK. Um, you get to just do it. And so let me go ahead and mute the other, other lines here. Um, order. All right. So um, Ego talked about keeping our virtual desktop orderly. We've talked before about keeping our physical space orderly, which is something I'm constantly reminding my daughter to do. In fact, just earlier, and thank you again for the jokes, because just earlier, I walked into my office, walked past her stuff. She's sitting there on the phone doing something. I'm like, get off the phone, right? Do you need work? Do you look around? Do you need work? And, uh, and so, so I'm, just, I'm just looking at something, right? So the idea or the habit of, of avoiding uh, creating order is one that perpetuates itself. I know we've talked about like upward spirals and downward spirals, but the, 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 any habit, if there's any habit that I would want to instill in myself and anyone I care about, any of our members here, anyone who's watching this right now on YouTube, uh, my daughter, my friends, my colleagues, it would be the, the ability to keep order in one's life, which includes in one's mind. One of the reasons that, that uh, we do you know, jovial stuff. In fact, I think we have, is it, oh my goodness, uh, quick tangent. Ivia, is it, is it today or is it, is it next week we're doing the hospitality suite with? It's oh, the 12th of February. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All very right. good. Um, Cause we, we, uh, we like to celebrate each other's success here, right? That's all. That's also a deliberate and orderly thing that brings order to our lives. When we see things working, I want you to think about it like this. If, if you see things working, that is, that is an acknowledgement of order being demonstrated. So I was in this lecture decades ago. I was in this lecture uh, with, with uh, Bob Proctor. And has anyone heard of a guy named John Canary? Uh, Bob Proctor and John Canary. In fact, if you look back in the archives, um, highly recommended, by the way, uh, the You Were Born Rich home study course. Uh, by Life Success Productions. That was Bob Proctor's company. I think Bob has since changed the title of his company or whatever. But anyway, it was the Born Rich Home Study Course, which was uh, recordings of a two or three day uh, seminar with workbook and exercises and all this kind of stuff. But one of the things that uh, Canary said in, in his lecture, his portion of that, he was sharing the stage with, with Bob. Um, he said, all, all of you know, life, the universe, whatever, uh, operates via order and movement, order and movement. Okay, so that's a pretty simple philosophy if you want to examine it a little bit. All right, so order and movement. Let's see here. Does that, does that, uh, does that hold water? Okay, so nothing happens if we're not moving, right? So, uh, and I've also heard that, that things are constantly changing, right? That, that you know, there's this Law of perpetual transmutation of radiant energy. Nothing's created or destroyed. It's just moving from this form into that form. That would be called a movement. Uh, electricity is, in, in theory, because we, we can't prove this, but in theory, it's electrons moving across, you know, the conductor, right? So that's movement, right? You doing work, that, that's movement. But what is work, right? If we look at work as more than just a four-letter word, which it is, that's how my, my daughter looks at it. But it's a, it's a useful word, right? What is the simplest definition of work? Well, it's on purpose action. On purpose action. So that's also action, right? That's a movement, but on purpose. Is that orderly or disorderly? Well, that's orderly. Orderly. So we're doing something with a purpose. All right. So, so, that, so that very simple philosophy of order and movement are the ingredients of all success. That, that kind of holds water for me. I would add something to that, and that is that we, we take things to a conclusion. If I look at the anatomy of success, it's completing what I started. So yes, it's orderly movement to, to an end result, to something I can observe and say that's done, right? So, so like um, uh, Koila, who started us off today talking about her casserole or whatever she's making overnight for her breakfast, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, there is a done to that cycle there's a start to that cycle. I'm going to put the stuff in the slow cooker pot. I'm going to cause movement in that pot via molecules, heat, right? And then I'm going to stop, 
right? Or the machine will stop because it's got automatic settings or whatever the scenario is, but it will get to a done. And when it is done, Coyla will enjoy, enjoy her breakfast. And that will be approximately nine hours from now or however long it takes to cook that because it's getting late here in England and she's going to be getting up for breakfast here in a few hours. So, uh, so that's success, right? That is the anatomy of success. We just witnessed it, right? Orderly movement to a specific end result that we can observe. And we can say, yes, that is done. When you turn the light switch on, you're causing movement through the electrons and the switch, right? And everything. And now you see the light is on success. Okay. So what does that mean for us? There's two things that, that keep coming back uh, in our conversations here in, in our group. Uh, one is, is decisiveness. Decisiveness. Okay. So do I know what to do? Because the, the opposite would be what? Indecision, right? Indecision, also known as procrastination, which is what? The roots of worry, fear, doubt, right? Self-doubt, self-diminishment. Have you ever have you ever had a day, and I know you have, because I'm not that unique. I've had plenty of these days where I was pissed off. I was just upset with myself. And I and I looked back and I said, and the day wasn't over yet. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm so irritable. Why am I so irritable? I'm, I'm like, you know, uh, hair, hair trigger over here, right? Antagonistic, just down. What, what, what did I not do? What, where has my integrity failed me today? How have I not followed the commands that I've given to myself about what I should be doing here today? How have I allowed disorder into my life and therefore into my mind, right? What do I know that I could have accomplished today that I didn't, that I procrastinated on, that I killed time, killed time. One of, uh, one of Ben Franklin's uh, virtues was lose not time, lose not time. Well, well, Ben, thanks for the reminder. I lost time today. Let me right now, let me right now create some order in my life by getting something done. What's something on my to-do list I can get done right now. And the inertia, oh, I well, yeah, but it's more comfortable for me to just sit here and be pissed off. It's more comfortable for me to sit here and be critical of others, not of myself necessarily. But, you know, when we when we know our own ethics are are um, out, right, out of order, it's easy to be critical of others. So here I am being critical. You know what? Let me stop this right now and let me get something done, something I know how to do. Let me decide to do something decision, a cutting off point. I have now decided I'm going to do something, some high integrity action right now. And as I've said many times, because I've observed it in my own life, you want good self-esteem, do esteemable things. Fantastic. You know what? I didn't work out yet today. There it is. There, there's something that I know I could have done, but I practiced non-doing this on that. Let me go ahead and, and, and do some exercise right now. It doesn't have to be a big event. Okay. But it's a high integrity action. And we're going to start that action now. <clears throat> Movement's going to happen on purpose action, right? That's work, push-ups, jumping jacks, something, right? Burpees, right? Go do 20 burpees. That's a workout. Go do 20 burpees. And then stop. And watch how much better you feel about yourself. I'm telling this to me right now. John, I'm giving yourself a, a command. Okay, thank you very much. So so I did that. And then suddenly my my emotional state was elevated. I still had things that, that I could be, um, you know, displeased about in my life. But one thing that I was no longer displeased about was that I gave myself a command and followed it. In other words, I was decisive. I took uh, on purpose action and I, and I took it to a done, to a known end result. The end result is I did my exercise. So decisiveness, that's, that's one of the the things that keep coming us up for us again and again and again. <clears throat> the other thing that uh, that I'm being reminded of again and again and again. What do you guys think it is? If you have if you have the ability to be decisive, and yet uh, and yet you don't see yourself getting the result that you want, could we be? Could we be barking up the wrong tree? I think um, with all of the, the different 
with all of the different um, things that we've got going on here in the mastermind group, right? We had Ego this morning with um, uh, Tech Talk. We had yoga yesterday with Nancy. We had branding last night with, with Shannon. We have life and business tools with, with Adrian, right? We've got e-commerce work groups, right? Now with Evelyn, now that Stuart's uh, taking a step back as he's getting his, uh, his uh, other stuff in life together, right? Um, could we, could we have a disorderly state in terms of, in terms of our, our actual directive? You know, it's one thing to, to decide I'm going to climb this ladder, but it's another thing to decide it's leaning against the right wall. I'm going up the correct wall. We've been studying Steve Covey with seven habits of highly effective people. And he reminds us that, that, um, you know, management, good self-management would be like, you know, charging through the jungle, wielding the machete and cutting down the shrubberies and getting to your destination. But good leadership is climbing the tree and looking at the, the scene and saying, oh, we're in the wrong jungle, right? Or we're in the right jungle, or we need to go east or west or whatever it happens to be, right? So so it's that, it's that self-determinism and it's that knowing that we're going in the right direction. And what is that right direction? Well, how many of us, if, if asked, and I know Glenn introduced this idea uh, in his general session this week, as he's done several times, right? That's another thing we've got. We've got, uh, we've got, you know, networking magic and we've got all kinds of great stuff that we could apply to some direction. But the big question is, what do you want? Right. Glenn, that was the first question in your, uh, oratory, as I recall, right? What do you want? What do you want? Do we have an answer to that question? And is it immediate? And is it definite? In other words, is it decisive? Just like, what do I do? Can and should be a decisive thing. Am I going in the right direction? In other words, what do I want? Can and should be decisive. Now, when, when successful people make decisions, whether they know it or not, there's two questions that they, that they think to themselves, you know, verbally or silent or whatever. Number one, will this decision, will this action move me in the right direction of my goals? Yes or no. And if yes, well, will this decision violate the rights of others? Yes or no. And if the answer is no, then they take action. There was no third question. Will this move me in the direction of my goals? And will this violate the rights of others? Right? If yes and no, then, then action. Right? So assuming we can get to a decision, to a decisive action, we've got to know what our goals are. Will this decision move me in the direction of fill in the blank? Can you fill in the blank? And there's been a lot of times where myself, right, having achieved a lot, but having rested on my laurels or having been distracted by inputs that I didn't ask for, but will always impinge on me and you always, 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 right. There will always be inputs, very seductive, right. Think of me, think of me, think of me, right. Get distracted, get distracted, right. Be upset, be critical, right. Uh, be something other than on purpose. Be, have your attention fixated outside of of your, your sphere of influence, right? We talked about this earlier this week where again, Covey and Coyla tuned in on this as well, where, where um, you know, here's what I can have an effect with that, that would be a circle of influence. And as long as I operate within that circle of influence, my circle of influence expands into my circle of concern, which I've got plenty of concerns, which right now at this moment, here's what I can do within my circle of influence. But way out here, yeah, I may have some concerns, but if I can't have an effect right now with that, let me operate where I can have an effect. Seven habits of highly effective people, not the seven habits of highly uh, chronically dissatisfied people. That's not the title of the book. Okay. Seven habits of highly dissatisfied people. Um, <laughs> and look, there's, there's a place for dissatisfaction. I would even call it divine in some ways. I wouldn't be, um, you wouldn't be seeing me with, you know, beautiful uh, lights right now, right? If had it not been for, you know, this guy, Tom uh, saying, you know what, I'm tired of candles and hot oil lamps right? So how's that look? Not as good. Well, of course, you know, we've, we've progressed since incandescent light. These are LEDs, but, um, but yeah, that's a little bit better light, right? I do have a, a bit of a window right here, but light is useful. Thanks, Tom. He was dissatisfied with those hot oil lamps. I know Stuart likes the, the oil lanterns, right? I don't know. I can't bring myself to, to get one, at least not here in the city. I'm going to have to buy like a barn or something. But then the, the consideration is, you know what? Every story I've ever heard as a child about the barn burning down is because the cow kicked over the hot oil lamp and it lit the hay on fire. It's like, Stuart, why are we buying hot oil lamps? It's 2021, man. Anyway, total tangent. Um, <laughs> 
do you know what you want, right? And so there was an idea that was kicked around a couple of weeks ago about a dream board. We talked about this. So that's why when I was thinking, you know, um, ego, declutter your desktop, well, put something on your desktop, right? Um, quite often I've got nothing, nothing, just black, right? Or, or just like, uh, uh, you know, a, a very benign picture, something that doesn't distract me from anything. So that anything I see besides that, that very basic bland, you know, piece of wood or something, um, you know, is going to be, is going to be something I could put my attention on. It's on my desktop. I see it. It's not the, the bland picture, but now I'm thinking, and we talked about this before, what if I had reminders on there? What if my desktop was so orderly? And in other words, I created order by, by putting on my desktop, that which I want in my life. Now we know whether we like it or not, we know that that which we fix our attention on, that which we think about again and again and again tends to show up in our life. We've heard about uh, stories, like some of you have uh, watched the movie, The Secret, going back a few years, um, which was a, a you know commercialized you know, production on, on just what they call law of attraction. Uh, so, so we're thinking about these things and these things tend to show up in our life. Again, this is uh, something we could say is a function of, of our own um, causation. Uh, whether we know it or, or, or not, right? We, we tend to attract that which we are into our life. So if I am, if I am the person who would have such and such experiences in my life, driving the new uh, car, uh, living in the fine house, um, having the, the, you know, my preferred wardrobe, in my case, you know, black polo shirts, I'm good to go. But, uh, you know, it, whatever it is for you, that, uh, that relationship, that, um, that um, you know, romantic uh, experience, the uh, long-term relationship, the uh, grandchildren, we've heard all these things come up in our conversations. Well, are there ways to create order and constant reminders to keep order in, right? Just like, just like my daughter's room. Where, where order can be put in, but it doesn't necessarily stay in. Is there a way to keep order in, stay in order? Just like we get the oil changed in our car, we're keeping an orderly state in the engine. Here's the lubrication and the viscosity and, and the removal of the contaminants, right? So that is an orderly state in that piece of machinery. Well, this piece of machinery, which I would argue is infinitely more valuable than the, the engine in the car you're gonna drive for a few years and then trade it in and get another one or whatever you're gonna do, Right, this thing, even though we didn't pay for it, is infinitely more valuable. We tend to value that which we pay for. My precious thing, right? We heard the joke earlier about, you know, here's the, you know, the the monk, the the llama, right? Oh, just what I always wanted, nothing, right? So, so, um, so that idea comes from the most precious thing that they, yes, that they do have, and that is use of their mind. So. So are we going to value that? Are we going to keep order in, in our mind? So we've got physical order in our space or not. We've got virtual order on our computer systems or not, right? We've got these things that are going to be screaming at our attention for our attention in our physical space and our computer space. How about in our mental space? So I'm thinking there's no vacuum, right? Nature hates vacuums. Something's going to fill that vacuum. So let's say we do create order in, in our desktop. Right? What can we put in its in its uh, in the place of of just the blackness? Something that you something that you refuse to be denied. Something that you will not live without. Something that you would like to have in your life. So now we got a constant reminder of. Yes, I'm decisive. Yes, I'm going in a direction, of exactly what I want. Right? It's a deliberate direction. This may sound too simple, but look, it's it's so subtle, and and I'm, I can be a victim of this. It's, it's very easy to do, very easy to do, to be impinged upon by all the other things that are screaming for my attention and forget where I'm going, forget where I'm going. Now, it's way more inspirational to move toward what I want than it is to move away from what I don't want. And so if my attention is fixated on things that I'm critical of or dissatisfied with, right? Tom Edison didn't invent the light bulb by saying, oh, these hot oil lamps sucks. Oh, I hate candles. I hate candles. I hate candles. That, that, that's not how you invent a light bulb, right? What do you want? And um, a guy who I've done some events with back in, I don't know, decade plus ago named uh, Michael Lozier, he wrote actually the book on law of attraction. And, uh, and he said, you can get clarity through contrast. 
right? So if it's easy for us, because we've had our attention fixated on all the things we don't like, all the things that are displeasing, all the disorderly stuff, all the non-movement, right? So let's list those out, right? Here's all the stuff I hate. Great. What's the exact opposite? <laughs> That's it. Clarity through contrast, right? Oh, this is black. This is white, right? This is, um, you know, I have no time. This is, I have plenty of time. This is, uh, uh, let's say, um, alone, lonely, right? This is, uh, you know, prospering relationship or whatever the words are for you. Um, this is um, um, lack, limitation, right? This is abundance, prosperity, right? And then we get specific about those things. And again, for many of us, this, this is like, yeah, John, we've talked about this before, but, but it's easy to forget. It's easy to forget. So each day, are we starting our day with, um, with our intention and hearing ourselves say it, right? In our meditative state, in a you know, bit of quiet time, I am so happy and grateful and confident now that I earn X amount of dollars, I've got the, you know, I'm purchasing the, the home, the, the property, I'm whatever it is for you, right? And when you, when you hear the words come out of your own mouth, you can also get the mental image picture of, of what does that look like in reality? because you've got the pictures right there. You've done the research. I heard someone say, uh, you know, I wanna buy, I wanna buy a house. And, uh, and someone said, well, well, why don't you? And I said, well, I don't, I don't have money. And they said, well, where's the house gonna be? Uh, I'm not sure, I'm looking at this area, that area. Okay, well, how many square feet? Well, I'm not sure. So a whole lot of not sures on that. And the conclusion was, well, you don't need the money because you haven't made the decision to buy the house. You don't even know what house it is. So decision always precedes the means. And I work on this with, with people in, in my consulting work. So, so they want a result, nice. They're a bit vague about what that result is. And they're completely stopped, typically, completely stopped in terms of taking the action, the orderly action, right? Order and movement. They're not moving towards that because they're still a bit vague, not only on what they want, but also what actions it would take to get there. Now, look, nobody knows how to reach a goal until you've reached it. So it's not like you need to have your crystal ball and now you'll be, you'll arrive or something. No, but, but you know, the journey of a thousand miles, one step, every step I take further down that road, more is revealed. I can see more tomorrow. I'm taking my daughter on a, um, on a hike that I've done. I haven't done it in some years, but I know this hike, I know this trail. And this trail is about four miles from the trailhead to the summit. And there are multiple mini summits along the way. And this is going to be an interesting hike for her because it's one of those, one of those trails where you get to, you think you're, you're getting to the summit. You've been, you've been climbing for a couple of miles and you think you're there. And then as soon as you get there, you realize, oh, look up there. And then you go to that summit. And then you realize, oh, look up there, right? So it's one of those false summit kind of hikes where you can't see the actual summit until you're on like the fourth leg of this, of this incline. And you'll never know until you actually walk it, right? When you actually put feet on that little, you know, crest, right? Now you get to see higher. You'll never get to see higher if you don't, if you don't do it. So knowing that there is a summit and knowing picturing in our minds consistently what that looks like. I already told her at the, at the summit, there's this, there's this emblem, there's this, this big brass or metal thing that's nailed into the rock that you've arrived. And it says the elevation, you know, the name of the, the peak, right? And uh, so she's excited about experiencing this. So she's got a goal now, right? To go see the emblem at the peak, right? And, and so we're going to do that. And I think there's going to be a nice lesson in there for her. It's going to be order and it's going to be movement and it's not going to be instant gratification. And it's going to be exercise for Johnny. Cause I'll tell you what, <laughs> I could use it. I could use it. Who couldn't at this point? I know some people through the whole COVID experience have gotten in the best shape of their life. I'm yeah, yeah doing okay. Doing okay. Um, but I was just in the gym before I got on with you guys and uh, yeah, it was, it was good. It wasn't amazing, but it was good. It was good. I'm, I'm keeping it together, but I deserve a bit more cardio and I find treadmills to be insanely boring. So I'm going to go hiking. Um, there you go. All right. Um, hopefully I made some sense. Hopefully you know what you want and hopefully you're moving toward it, even if you don't know how to get it, but you're doing something orderly, you're moving, 
right? Because you know what the end result is going to be, the guaranteed future outcome, whether or not, whether or not you know every step, every rock, every rattlesnake you might confront along the way. I doubt we're going to get any rattlesnakes yesterday. It's, it's uh, actually winter here in Arizona and the rattlesnakes like to hibernate, uh, but it is pretty pretty exhilarating when you when you confront a rattlesnake on a trail in Arizona. I don't know if any of you have ever done that, but it will wake you up. Oh my goodness, there is no sound in the world like that. You will be awake. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop talking and uh, your thoughts, right? What do you want? Are you creating order towards that? Are you moving towards that decisively, right? Have there been things that have impinged upon you that, that maybe you could go ahead and eliminate or supplant because there's no vacuum, right? It's not just blackness, right? Something's going to fill that spot. Are you deliberate about filling that spot in your mind with the image of what you want? Uh, who's got some thoughts on this? Let's go ahead and go around the table and then stop because we'll be done. All right. So who would like to floors open? By the way, the new Zoom has the uh, raise your hand button under reactions, depending on what version of Zoom. Oh my goodness. Is it is it really Elmer? Is it really the mighty <laughs> Elmer? Oh my goodness! Hey, brother. Hey, John. How are you? Happy Good, Friday. Good man. I know everyone. you've been you've been uh, kicking it with work. You've been doing your thing. Uh, yes. How, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is this is such a great topic. Um, you know, quite honestly, I was not on video because I was getting my place in order, <laughs> literally cleaning up. You know, after Olivia and putting things away, but. You know, it just, it's just such a great reminder in terms of just like clarity of our space and our mind. And uh, I, I was just, just wanting to say it's such a great topic. And then I also loved your um, comments about clarity from contrast, because, you know, it's so true. Like, you know, if you have friends or family that, you know, are constantly on the negative and whatever, I mean, that's such a great point to bring up to be like, okay, so all this list of bad. But what's the opposite of that? And how can you like achieve or work in that direction? I mean, I, lo I love that. So thank you. Oh, you're, you're so welcome, sir. You are so welcome. I'm looking at a couple of the comments in here too. And Elmer, you know what? Let me just say, um, you and Hung San have been <laughs> a, a staple in this community for, for some time. And uh, we're going to, I know you guys have not been um, you know, as available to, to be on with us live. But I just want you to know that everyone here loves you guys and little Olivia. And we're looking forward to, to watching Olivia grow up. Um, oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the group's energy, I mean, we definitely miss it every time we're not on the call. And mm -hmm. it's always just good to know, even though that, you know, that there are recordings and that we could, you know, watch and see that and just get the transmission from that. But it's always great to know that this family is always thinking about everyone else and just looking for the best and bringing out the best in everyone. So thank you, everyone. I mean, this has been great. Thank you, brother. So glad you're here. All right, let's go to Coila over in England. Hey, Coila. Actually, Scotland. What am I saying? Yes. Hey, Coila in Scotland. Coila. Hello, Coila. You're muted. Coila. Coila. There, yes, there I am. Okay. I was going to say, yes, definitely Scotland yep. or Britain, <laughs> but not England. Right, right, right. That's a very good way of winding up a Scot. Right. I, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. I will now blow. Um, yeah, it's off. fine. I'm, I'm both. So <laughs> it's allowed. But yeah, right. I can tell you. Yeah, that that just if you want to wind up a Scottish person, yes, <laughs> just call the whole country England and that'll oh, no, do it no, just no. fine. Yeah. Anyway, um, I don't know what uh, uh, whether um, what I've got to say is particularly is not particularly about me, but um, yeah. Um, science says that entropy is the tendency of everything to fall apart. So to get disorganized, everything will tend that that's the normal state of things is to fall apart. So in order for things not to fall apart, you have to put energy in. And that's what we do. To in also in order to have an organized place, you have to put energy in. Otherwise, your place is going to fall apart and it'll be a mess. Your desk will be a mess. Your desktop will be a mess. Everything will be a mess. That is just how it is unless you put energy in. And that's the natural order of things. So there's a couple of sayings that came to mind as you were talking. And one is a stitch in time saves nine. 
Okay, mm. um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of channeling Stuart here, but this is maybe not a Stuart type of thing. And there's another one here. Uh, for want of a nail, uh, the shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For want of a horse, the rider was lost. For want of a rider, the message was lost. For want of a message, the battle was lost. For want of a battle, the kingdom was lost. And all for the want of a horseshoe nail. So there you go. That just that just tells you what putting a little bit of effort in in time does instead of leaving it. And then I have a personal story from, from um, coming home last night. So I've just been on a 25 hour shift uh, yesterday, yesterday and the day before it gets difficult to keep track of it. So I was working and then sleeping and then working. And I walked home um, as I do, because I, I like to keep my exercise up. I walked home, came to my door and discovered that the door was broken and it would not open. All the, all the windows are shut because there's a gale of wind and torrential rain. So I'm standing outside in all my waterproofs in a gale of wind and torrential rain and I can't get in my house. There is no back door. The house has only one door. So I have to sort out somebody to come and fix my door. So I did that. Now, the, the, the point of saying all of that is the door has been a bit dicky for a while and I just thought it was a bit dicky and I didn't do anything about it. But... Uh, what had happened was the spindle inside the door had actually eventually broken. So there you go. For the want of a stitch, I had to spend nine and I had to come home after that many hours and discover I couldn't actually get in my house out of the weather. I had to go and uh, walk down and find somebody else because I couldn't get in my house to get to the to phone directory to phone anybody to come and fix it. I had a phone, but no, I didn't have the numbers I needed in my phone. I couldn't feed my animals because my boots were in the house. So I had to go and borrow somebody else's boots. <laughs> I mean, for goodness sake, how ridiculous is all of that? So, yeah, it, it just is good to be organized and just to think ahead of all of these things. And what can, what, what can I say apart from it just pays to be to think ahead, be organized, get all your ducks in a row and it's tough. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Corla. I'm I'm glad you you survived that. That's uh, oh, yeah. blown away it, by the, the gale. In, in my life, that is that that just is a minor thing. You know, yeah. so many worse things have happened in my life, and at, at no point was I despairing or anything else. Right, right. But well, you uh, know, the, we're talking about a, a machine, right? A doorknob, some sort of a spindle or something, right? So yeah. so the main maintenance of of machinery, right? Um, but in your case, you know, do you not have like a, you know, a directory in your phone, like a smartphone or. Oh, I do. Yeah. But I don't, I don't keep, I don't keep a builder in there normally. Cause my build, uh, you know, that's, that's in that we have an Island directory. Cause I live on an Island. We don't right. use the big directory. We have a, like a, a, normally I have that in my backpack. So I thought, oh, it's okay. I've got my directory in the backpack. No. Cause I've taken it on, out on the web. Uh, eh? They don't publish that on the web. Like if I if I wanted a locksmith or something, I would just go yeah, on. but 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 uh, but you don't live on an island of six hundred people, right? We we have a local like printed directory of all these people. So I was phoning around, and the first person I phoned was off the island, so that's no damn good. Right. And the next person I phoned was was okay. So it's just a matter of finding somebody who's here who can do the job and etc. It just it was interesting. Wow. And uh, yeah, I ended up with my door shut with a piece of rope last night. Wow. From the, you know, so uh, and it's fixed today and it'll be completely fixed in a little while. But yeah, it's just, you know, organization. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Hey, everyone, all the problems you don't have because you don't live on an island of 600 people. <laughs> <laughs> and cook your breakfast the night before yeah <laughs> thank you Coyla. all right good stuff yeah i can't i can't walk down the street without finding uh you know home depot or you know ace hardware or whatever i mean it's everywhere so um different uh, different culture uh thank you all right uh anybody else want to talk today before we get into on purpose action also known as work and we've got plenty of it too. My goodness, we got so much going on. I will just announce while you guys are considering who wants to talk next is that we do have our hospitality suite, which is open all day. And we do have 
be heard at 6 p.m. Eastern U.S. time today. Um, uh, integrated Nutrition is suspended for the week. Uh, Therese is not able to uh, host this week on that, but we will be back next week with Integrative Nutrition. So uh, back to Ivia. Ivia's got her hand up. What's going on, Ivia? Thank you, John. Um, this is great. I mean, I've got my goals for the year up on a wall that I walk past <laughs> pretty much any, anywhere I turn, I, I'm, I'm bound to see it. So it's always front of mind. And one of those goals is I'm going to move house um, this year. And so I've written down exactly what I want the property to be. Uh, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms. And I've started decorating. I mean, it's, it's the most bizarre thing, but I, I already know what every room is going to look like. And I know exactly where my workplace is going to be. And I know where my sewing space is going to be. I mean, everything is mapped out. So there is no uh, ambiguity about that in my mind. I am completely decided. And I know that when I see the property, I will know it because it will mirror what I have in my head. And so even though I've narrowed down the list of um, realtors um, that I'm going to work with for this, um, every time they send something my way, it doesn't meet the spec. I just simply say, no, I'm not viewing it because I know what I want. And everything they send me is not what I've given them um, in the brief. And so I'm not going to waste my time viewing stuff. Um, if it's not in the right area, I've actually, you know, I'm just not, you know, I'm not confused about what I want. Um, mm -hmm. So it was just great to hear you speak about this. And I'm like, oh, wow, it mirrors exactly what I'm doing. And so I know that I am going to move uh, and I can't wait to show you guys the new background when that happens. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I have no doubt that that's going to happen because you have no doubt about what you want. So you mentioned yeah. ambiguity, right? Being vague, yes. right? Yeah. And, and confused, right? So we need to get unvague, unvague, mm -hmm. right? Very specific. <laughs> and uh, and uh, thank you for that. And of then course, just to remind everyone that on the 12th of February, we are going to be celebrating our wins. We're going to be celebrating each other. We're going to be celebrating ourselves. So people should start thinking and start noting down what it is they want to share with the group because we're going to do a round robin in the hospitality suite after our general session. Fantastic. Thank you, John. Thank you, Evie. You're awesome. Well done. So are you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's get Julia out here. Hey, Julia. Well, if I, there we go. Got unmuted. Um, um, yes, I've been more organized since this group um, than ever in my personal home office. I was always good at work, but I wasn't so good here. And I'm, I'm on the move getting organized with my time and everything else. But I just wanted to, uh, and maybe this is better for next week, but um, last night after, I don't know if it was last night or the night before that Shannon had her session and she was talking about posting things on, um, I guess it was last night, posting things on Facebook and I stepped out in courage last night and posted my new brand logo for our new puzzles and announced to the world that I have a new business. So I just, I'm feeling very proud and happy and courageous and scared <laughs> all at once. And it's all because of this mastermind or I, I'm sure I'd still be sitting there worrying about everything. So wow, thanks wow. for effort, everybody. Julia, well done. So, so without, you know, without reaching and making known into the public, you know, here's my new company, here's right, then you're running a secret business, which really isn't a business, it's a hobby or an idea or something, but it's not a business. So well done. And, and, uh, and why not reach, right? You're awesome. People should buy your stuff, right? So, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Good times. Thank you, Julia. Um, and hello to your husband as well. All right, so uh, I think we're gonna wrap up with that. Are we good? Are we good to go? Everybody feeling good? Everybody happy, productive, right? Ready to do high esteemable things? Let's do that. Mark, you've got the floor. Mark, Sam just went up. Mark? Well, John, I thought I'd kind of end this today with uh, an impression that I do. Yeah. Um, anybody here remember Marvin the Martian? Oh, yeah. Any, oh, anybody Mark? do Marvin? Okay, so. Yeah. Where's the kaboom? There should have been an earth-shattering kaboom. 
That is exactly Marvin the Martian. Wow, I could picture the little Spartan hat with the, the black nice. with the two eyes. Yeah, well done. Nice. Well done. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, we'll see you all on, I'll be back here at 6 p.m. Eastern for um, to wrap up for the week. Anything I can assist you with in the meantime, go ahead and uh, hit us up on our private channels and um, I will see you again.